Welcome to our Sunday service here at Alive Church. Alive is a multi-site church and we have locations in Wyndham, Scunthorpe, Lincoln, Grantham and Gainsborough. And every week we have worship together led by our Alive worship team and we also hear a sermon from one of our pastors. We're going to start now by worshipping together with some Christmas songs. Mark the herald angels sing glory to
Christ the Lord. Oh, oh, oh. God of God, light of light, lo, he adores not the virgin's womb. Very God, begotten, not created, oh, come let us adore. If you'd like to give to the Ministry of Alive Church, please scan the QR code now on the screen and that will take you to our giving page on our website. We are now going to hear the word of God by one of our location pastors. Let's hear from them now. Good morning, church. Thanks for joining with us online today. And today we're looking at the topic of gifts for a king. Have you ever received a strange gift? Well, while preparing for this message, I had a quick look at some strange gifts that people have, re have received. Um, Here's some stories. When I turned 12, my grandmother gave me one half of a pool cue. She unscrewed it and gave me one portion. My younger brother received the other half for his ninth birthday a month later, but we didn't own a pool table. Another one, a pack of 10 not matching sock pairs. Or maybe this story, a board game with half the pieces missing. Then the guy asked me for it back a couple of days later. And finally, on my 13th birthday, my friend presented me with a string. He said, now you can play with your cat. But the person didn't have a cat. <laughs> I don't know whether you've got a funny gift story. In my family, my nan has a reputation for buying the most hilarious and intriguing gifts, usually embarrassing in some way or another. And one year, she bought my cousin a pack of secondhand note cards. The first half of the pack were blank but she only discovered about six months later that the rest of the pack were used and contained various letters, love notes, and birthday wishes. Today, we're looking at the story of the wise men bringing gifts to Jesus. And as we'll find out, their gifts were also a bit unusual. The wise men traveled to find Jesus. And then we see in verse 11 that they gave him three gifts. They may seem very strange to us, but they were actually gloriously profound and full of truth. As we grasp what these gifts were, we see how they teach us who Jesus is. I want us to see three things from this passage today. The first of those three things we find in verses 1 to 10, and this bit is called the search for the king. These wise men were on a journey searching for the king. We see in verse 1 that after Jesus was born, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Wise men is the English translation of the Greek word magi. The word uh, we get is from our English word, magicians. 
These were not magicians as such, but scientists, counsellors and astrologers. They were spiritual leaders, but seen by many as priests, like the Levites were in Israel. The Bible doesn't exactly tell us where they were from, but they were most likely from the Persian Empire. They observed the movements of the stars and planets, and they carefully recorded everything they saw. These wise men were searching for Jesus. They were looking for the king. This could have been up to two years after Jesus was born. The wise men had spent perhaps many months travelling from the east, and the Greek word used in the verse 11, translated child, was not the word for an infant baby, but for a toddler. And we see in verse 11 that Mary, Joseph and Jesus were now living in their own house and no longer in the inn. Finally, in verse 7, Herod asks the wise men how long ago it was since they first saw the star. It seems it was around two years, as in verse 16, Herod commands all the boys aged two and below to be killed. These wise men had heard about Jesus and they wanted to discover for themselves who he is. Perhaps you're watching today and you're searching for the king too. Maybe you're not yet too sure who Jesus is, but you're wanting to find out. We love that you're watching today. Maybe you're exploring faith and looking for your purpose in a world that seems lost. You can find that purpose today. At our locations, we run a tailor-made course called Alpha, which is perfect for anyone wanting to explore faith. And we'd love to invite you to connect with us and come along to the next course. You can do that by filling in our online connect form, which we'll put the link out for. Back to our story, the wise men follow the star and they find Jesus and give him gifts that show that that they truly recognised who he was and who he still is today. So the gifts for a king. And for this bit, we look at verse 11. The three gifts the wise men gave sound very strange to us. And yet they were a statement of the identity of the king. They had searched for and now found. The first of those gifts was gold. The wise men gave him gold because they knew Jesus was the king of kings. Gold is the gift you gave kings. If you went to see a king in the ancient world, you would bring a tribute, usually of gold. It was the most precious metal in those days. And when you went to see a king as a tribute, as an acknowledgement of his kingship, you gave him gold. The wise men knew Jesus is the king of kings. That is why in verse 2, they ask Herod where the king of the Jews is. Jesus is the king of kings. When Jesus was on trial before he was crucified, we read, Pilate said to him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say correctly that I am a king. Jesus is the king of kings, supreme over everything. The second gift they brought was frankincense. The wise men gave him frankincense because they knew Jesus was fully God, who became fully human. Frankincense was the incense that was used in the temple for the worship of God. They're saying that this little baby is no ordinary baby. This toddler is God himself. He is worthy of our worship because he is divine. He's the saviour king and he is the Lord of lords. Jesus is fully God who became fully human. God could not have made himself bigger to impress us, so he made himself smaller to attract us. Someone once put it this way, The birth of Jesus shows once and for all that God is not above us or against us, but rather among us. With the birth of Jesus Christ, God has truly become Emmanuel. God is with us. Therefore, the birth of Jesus is the most extraordinary and important event in history. At a moment in time, the infinite became an infant. Almighty God became a human being in a manger. And the final gift they bought was myrrh. They gave him myrrh because they knew that Jesus was born to die for the sins of the world. Myrrh is probably the most unusual and strange gift you could give a baby. Myrrh was the spice used in the first century to embalm dead bodies. It was the burial spice. And when the person died, they would use myrrh on the body and wrap it in linen before putting it in the grave. He's not just the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the God who is worthy of worship. He's the Saviour who came to die. Jesus did not come to earth to live, he came to earth to die for our sins, for all the wrongs that we have committed. Even before Jesus had spoken a word, people knew that he had come to die. This gift looked towards the cross. It looked towards salvation, forgiveness and grace. At Christmas time, when we receive presents we don't really need, God offers a gift that we cannot do without. And finally, we're going to look at the worship of the king. 
The wise men searched for Jesus and they found him and they worshipped him. Once we see Jesus for who he is, worship is the only proper response. We see in verse 2 that they were looking for Jesus to worship him. They were looking to show gratitude. They were looking to show honour, to worship him and to express their love. When we see Jesus, we see in verse 11, they fell down and worshipped him. Our worship flows from a revelation of who Jesus is and his amazing grace. Wisdom flows from a revelation of who Jesus is and what he's done. And the reason these intelligent, high-achieving wise men bowed down before a baby was because they knew who he was and who he is. Worship is far more than singing. We see that they worshipped as they obeyed what God had said to them. Wise people listen to God's heart and live this way. They go home another way. And we see in verse 12, these wise men are warned in a dream by God about Herod and trust him and go home another way. Too many of us live our life our way when God is calling us to live another way, which is his way. Wise people repent quickly of things in their life and cling to God's transforming and empowering grace. Could it be that there is someone watching today and you feel the Holy Spirit nudging your heart, saying it's time to journey another way? There's a grace and forgiveness for you today. As someone once said, a dead-end street is a good place to turn around. A Christian is a person who has the possibility of innumerable new starts. The story of the wise men is yet another confirmation of who Jesus is, that he came to save us and wants more than anything to have a relationship with you. Back to the obscure presents and the half-written note cards. Maybe you've been searching through the note cards in your life. Maybe you've found friendship. Maybe you've found a way to make sense of this world without God. Or maybe today is the day to realise God's love letter is written and sitting right there. It's written all over your life, that he's for you and he's not against you, that he's with you and will not leave or forsake you, that he loves you just the way you are. Maybe today you could join me in a simple prayer to commit your life to God and start a relationship with him afresh today. We're going to pray that prayer now. Dear Lord Jesus, I need you. I need your grace to forgive me and your love to change me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I choose today to live my life for you. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, I'd love it if you could connect with one of our team who would love to pray with you and connect you to the church. Thank you for joining with us today for God's Word. Thank you for joining our service today. We hope you've enjoyed connecting with us. If you'd like to know more about us, please visit our website or follow us on our social media channels. And we'd love to invite you to our Christmas Spectacular on the weekend of the 16th, 17th and 18th of December at Lincoln Central. You can use the QR code on the screen now to book in and we'd love to see you there. God bless you and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Silent night. Holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round the young virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and Sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Silent 
night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round the young virgin mother and child. Hey